Alright guys, so I know it's been a bit since we've taken a look at trigonometric functions. Today I want to just solidify some of that knowledge. I remember uh, from previous uh, the work that was set, a couple of you were a little confused on it. Just to clarify, all I was looking for was matching the variables such as a, b, h, and k to the ones within the actual function. You didn't need to graph it. I recommended you taking a look at what the graphed version looked like. But for the most part, mm -hmm. I just wanted you guys to be able to set up that correlation between uh, what each of these variables stand mm -hmm. for and what they might look like inside an actual function. Today, we're going to try and explore a little bit more in how these graphs actually change. So you'll notice that I do have the uh, general formula set up top, just so we could always reference this if need be. But then I also, on the right, set up a couple of the three trigonometric functions we're looking at and their base form. So this would just be no alterations, no nothing else, sine of x, cosine of x, and tangent of x. And as a quick recap, mm -hmm. so in this case, I'm using the x values from negative pi to 2 pi. That's just to get a little bit of a reference of what is happening mm -hmm. in the negative side but then making sure that we have the entire length of a circle set. And that for sine, we start out at the zero point, and the other zero points are set at pi. So do you remember, I'm not drawing them in just because it can make things look a little cluttered, but there is a mark in between zero and pi that is pi over two there is a mark between pi and 2 pi that is 3 pi over 4. Now pi over 2 has the peak, pi has the 0, 3 pi over 4 has the minimum, and then 2 pi has a 0 again. And just remember that this is the typical pattern starting at 0, uh, zero, zero to, zero to, uh, to 2 pi 0 cosine is a little bit different. Instead we start up at 1, having a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. We could see that our peak is all the way at the beginning, that we would cross over the x-axis at that pi over 2, minimum at pi, and then the pattern would continue forwards and back. Tangent was that slightly weirder one where we actually go infinitely. To remember that there is an invisible line at these marks here that tangent never actually goes to and to remember that these lines exists exist now also something to notice is that within each of these we end up with uh, typically two whole peaks so it's it'll come to help to recognize that we go up once and down once within a sine that with a cosine we kind of do like half of one starting from zero to two pi specifically half of one a full loop a full uh, curve and then half a curve basically getting two curves and that here we end up with half a curve a full curve and half a curve getting two and so that'll come into play a little bit later as we actually take a look at them so I'm actually just going to be doing the first two so that you guys can get a chance to uh, do the rest. Uh, but we're still doing quite a bit because I want to see a function for ev each and every one. So in this case, we're going to start off with uh, the equation three times. You know, let me let me set this up so we can make sure we have some room over here. Three times t of 2x plus pi. So we're going to be doing this for sine, we're going to be doing this for cosine and tangent, where that t just stands in place for those functions. So the first thing we actually want to do is take a look and see what values are here, what values are we using. So we take a look, if we have an a value, actually 
Well, if we take a look, a should be right at the front, being multiplied to our function. So we do have a number there, that's 3. So our amplitude is going to be 3. All right, so t is just a function. Let's take a look if we have a b value. b is what's being multiplied to the x. Well, we do have a 2 in front of the x, so we have a b value. Let's move on to the h, remembering that whatever, if we're given an h, we basically just uh, switch, the, switch the signs. So in this case, it's being subtracted or added to whatever the x is, so we do have that we flip the signs to get negative pi, and then we can notice that k, we don't technically have a k, but you can set k as just zero because that's what it is. So remembering what each of these stand for, a is the amplitude or the size range. b is that new one that we haven't seen with normal functions that is frequency. So that's basically how close these peaks are together h is our x change, how far on the x-axis the, the entire function moves, and k is our y change. So right now we're only looking, we want to draw out our graph to see what's going on. So we need to look at everything, but uh, taking it one at a time. First, we want to draw out our x-axis. So we're just going to draw a line for now. We know that somewhere on here is a zero. Now I mentioned in the homework that I want to see between negative pi and 2 pi. So that'll coincide with the examples we have here. So the very very left side should be negative pi, the very very right side should be 2 pi, and we want to get that as proportional as possible. So now we're going to put in our y axis, I think that actually be a little closer to here, and now we want to at least get the some of the general ones. Whenever you draw out just a quick graph, it's always good to go by pi, just to see the general way it works. So now in this case we want to find out about the y-axis. So we take a look at which of these work with the y-axis. So we're not moving it any further. So it's staying at zero. So that is going to be our starting point. We take a look at the amplitude and see, okay, so that's three. That means we're gonna go as high as three and as low as negative three. So perfect, we have our little clipping of our graph that we're actually gonna be working with and seeing what happens. So now that we've done that, we need to take a look at the frequency and the X change. So since uh, we didn't change the Y axis at all and our starting point is zero, then let's first take a look at the X change. So if this is where our zero is normally, so then from this pattern, we go up like this. But we need to shift this entire graph to the left by pi. So if we jump forward one pi, we could see that, well, it's still zero, so we're definitely gonna be starting at zero, but this value will move here and we follow the pattern as if we started at pi. So before, so if that was all it was, we would have the exact same pattern, something like this, and we could see that uh, this is why it's good to have a negative, that this little clipping right here is from zero to two pi. That's the exact thing that we were just looking at, but it shifted over a little bit. But since we have a change in the frequency, we actually also need to make sure we factor that in to what's happening. So again, frequency is just set at from peak to peak. So that means that we need to, as per the formula that we set before, whatever this b value is, 
we set 2 pi and divide it by that value so that it equals pi. And what that basically means is one entire set. This exact pattern from 0 to 2 pi gets done in pi, uh, no, pi terms. So we should be able to see this one pattern going up, down, and back up from 0 to pi. That is one set for it. And what that would look like on a graph. And also just to remember that we do still have that pi over 2 and that 3 pi over 2. So we're starting at 0. We moved it over to the left, so we're going to keep with the pattern of starting going down. Except we need to make sure that we get one cycle. We get one cycle of this pattern from 0 to pi. And then we would continue that pattern from pi to 2 pi, because that is a distance of 1 pi. Then, of course, we go backwards. Making sure that we hit our maximum for the amplitude and our minimum as well, matching with our pattern. So it's a little poorly drawn because I'm not the best uh, artist, but for the most part you see this pattern. Now the frequency became smaller. We could see that if we took just these two points here and kind of stretched it out, we would end up matching more closely to our original function. But since we are squishing it together, it's as if taking these two points and bringing them closer together. So now as we move on to cosine, we are still plugging into the exact same formula. We're not changing this form at all. We're just switching out sine for cosine where that t is. So because we're not changing anything else, our a, b, h, and k values stay the same. And since those values stay the same, our graph will stay the same. So then the only thing that's different is that we're following along cosine now. So when we take a look at the original cosine, it starts off at 1, or consider it as we start at our peak. So we all then have to move over by pi because we're shifting this whole thing to the left by pi. So wherever pi is, whatever term we get here, that is going to be our zero point now. So it starts at our peak. So we know that we're going to be starting at our peak here. The next thing we took a look at is that our frequency is set to 2. So again, we're squishing it together. We're taking from this part, from this end to this end, and we're squeezing it all into pi. Because again, we took 2 pi and divided it by our b term. 2 pi divided by 2. The 2's would cancel out, leaving you with just pi. That's why we're squishing it into pi terms. So we need to get this entire pattern shifted over slightly into just pi terms. So if we start off at this peak, then that would be just like this. Then we can see we go from one peak to the other. We have one entire cycle where we started at zero and ended up at pi. And then we would continue the pattern. And still, our minimum is negative 3, and our maximum is at 3. And we are both reaching those for our peaks. If we continue this, we would have something like that. And then we would do the same over on this end as well making sure we draw out from peak to peak. 
we could see that this is again squished together a bit we're getting we're hitting our amplitude points we have where we want to see our x from negative pi all the way up to 2 pi and we shifted it over by pi terms so just keep all of those things in mind sine and cosine have just about the exact same thought process when it comes to these graphs so whatever you because they have just about matching waves where cosine is just slightly off to the side but otherwise they have the same type of pattern going through and as long as you know one you should be able to just take that knowledge onto the other we're going to be moving on to tangent but tangent is a little bit weird because again it's not your standard waves that we see with sine and cosine so we have to think of it just slightly different although much of it is the same so again we have the same graph with one major difference I'm not setting up the three the positive three and the negative three because when it comes to tangent be, because of the way it curves off in infinitely uh, it has a sort of exponential growth that it just gets so so small or so so large at such a rate that the amplitude doesn't typically make much of a difference uh, you'll see most of the difference is is that it'll just make a steeper or a slower slope into infinity so amplitude isn't a big deal about it uh, the y change is but we'll be seeing that in the next function more so right now I want to just focus on frequency and shift so first we're going to take a look at the x shift in our tangent so we could see that originally we start off at the zero value so we'd start off here but then we take a look at pi and we want to start from pi and move forward with our pattern there well luckily uh, tangent actually works very well with just pi's and we could see that it's the exact same pattern whether we start at zero or pi if say we decided to start at pi we this value here was pi over 2 then you would see a noticeable change where we would start off at negative infinity and then cross over as such but since that's not the case we are focusing on pi right now we have a good starting point of zero zero and not much changes there it is when we get into the frequency that it can get a little bit confusing especially for tangent now in this case then this is a frequency of one because it's just the natural frequency as it is so from 0 to 2 pi we see these halves as such but we want to basically start off with a curve going upwards at 0 from 0 and end at pi with a curve going from below so we need to make sure to squish all of this into it so a good way of referencing mm -hmm. it is typically taking a look well at 2 pi mm -hmm. that's our end point we're gonna be at 0 so 0 to 0 and that's what we're taking a look at if that's the case so if that's the case let's take a look at our halfway point at our halfway point between 2 pi and 0 we're also ending up at, z at uh, the 0 point and we have a full curve going through so we have a 0 here we have a 0 here and we have a 0 here so we want to make sure each of those curve in now between them we end up between uh, pi and 2 pi we have an inf we have a non-existence so right in the middle there we should have a line where it does not exist and the same thing happens from zero and pi right in the middle of it 
there is a line that does not exist. So now we've set a couple of things up for it. I'll make this line a little bit straighter so that we could actually see so it kind of parallel to everything. So now that we kind of set that, we can continue with our pattern. Where again, we start at zero and we go up to that first non-existent line going upwards as such. Now once we hit that line, eventually we get to the point where we just can't reach it. So we go to the next part of our pattern where we're actually starting from the bottom. We cross through our halfway point for our entire uh, section mm -hmm. and go up to our next non-existent line. And then we keep up this pattern as mm -hmm. if we imagined these non-existent lines going through until we get our entire pattern set. And we would do this going backwards. This one is a little bit tricky to fully grasp, but it is the exact same thing we have been doing just on a different type of graph. So the biggest part uh, to that might be a little bit tricky to understand is the frequency. So again, frequency is very important in the set to remember that we follow this pattern. You take 2 pi and you divide it by your frequency, whatever your frequency is, and you're basically just trying to fit this section of the graph, this section of the graph, this section of the graph for whatever function you have into this amount of space. And that's the big deal about it. So this was going through our first function. Here we didn't have a k value and we also had our frequency as positive. Now in our next example we're actually going to be focusing on a uh, fractional frequency as well as our y change actually affecting what happens. Alright, so we have a new function, so we need to set up new a, a, b, h, and k values. So we take a look to see if there's anything that matches for a. There's nothing there, but with multiplication it's always technically 1. Uh, then we move on to b. In this case we have x over 1, uh, x over 2. So in multipli multiplication terms that would be the same as just saying one half times x. So b is our half. We take a look if there's an h value. In this case, none is immediately shown, so that would be zero, as in no change there. And in this case, we do have a k value after our function, and that would be two. So we need to set up our graph once more slightly differently according to these variables. So the first thing that we definitely know is I want to see from negative pi to pi so we have our x-axis ending at 2 pi on the right and ending at negative pi on the left and we want our y-axis to be proportional to that. So we could set up pi here and each of these sections should be just about the same. Now we want to take a look at the two factors that actually uh, change up our y, where we're actually going to take a look at our y value. So in this case, uh, normally whenever we have any of these functions, we start at 0, 0. So let's take a look at first our y change. That's going to be the first thing we look at because it immediately changes everything we have about our graph. So in this case, because that is 2, our starting point isn't going to be 0 for the y-axis. It's actually going to be at 2. That's going to be our new starting point. So if this is technically our 0, we need a new maximum value and minimum value. Since our amplitude is 1, that means we just go 1 over. Now, normally, that would just mean that from 0, we go up 1. So we have 1 and down 1 as negative 1. But since we're starting at 2, mm -hmm. going up 1 gives us 3, and going down 1 
gives us one. We set this slightly closer to the center. And so that is a key distinction. Right now, our maximum is three and our minimum is one. And we never actually, sh we should never cross over the X axis in this case. So now that we have our graph set, we don't need this bottom section for it. Now we want to take a look, are we shifting this graph at all to the left or right? Since H is zero, we are not doing that. So our normal starting point at zero, zero is where we're going to start from. So in this case, for sine, we're going to look at that first. So for our sine graph, we would normally start at zero, zero. Our origin point, you could think of it as such. So we're going to start off at our origin point here. Now we need to see how far we go. So that's where our frequency comes into play. Now, always remembering that in order to find out the final frequency, we take 2 pi and divide it by our b value, in this case, 1 half. When dividing by a fraction, it is the equivalent of multiplying the numerator by its reciprocal. And in this case, 2 over 1 is the same as just 2, and 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi. In this case, this number is larger than our initial 2 pi. So what that means is, we would actually take our point from 0 to 2 pi and stretch this exact pattern across off the graph to 4 pi. So if we had a graph going from 0 to 4 pi, we would have the exact pattern. But since we have a graph going only to 2 pi, we could see that it gets cut directly in half and we only get one part of the pattern. So we have to make sure to show that in our graph. So getting some references, in this case, since 2 pi is here, we cut from 0 to 2 pi in half, and that would give us that pi term, so we can know kind of a better reference of what's going on, and that is actually our peak. So then we're looking to, at pi, hit our peak, and to remember that right now our peak is set at 3. So we need to make sure that starting from here, we hit this value up top, and then at 2 pi, we are back at our origin section. So now we have our peak, we have two zeros, we draw out a curve between these values, and that is our right side. Now our left side, in this case, we go over pi, and we can see that pi gives us a peak, so going in the opposite direction after we have already gone up should give us our minimum value, remembering that the minimum is 1. So this actually becomes our sign using the function given. So something to immediately take away from this is that whenever you see a fraction, that typically means, not always, because some fractions are larger than 1. So if it's a fraction between 0 and 1, then you will typically get a much longer frequency. But if you have anything greater than one, you're actually squishing everything together that amount. So as I mentioned before, uh, sine and cosine is actually very, very similar. And so we're going to be doing something that is almost identical to this except making sure we have a different starting point. Since we already determined what we were looking for from our sine graph, figuring out for the function what exactly we need in terms of a y-axis and an x-axis, we could just draw out our graph as such, and then we're going to follow along for cosine. Now, to remember, cosine starts at our maximum value. In this case, for a standard cosine function, that would be 1. 
So in this case, our maximum is 3. And since we don't have any change for the x-axis, we are going to leave our starting point at that maximum. Now our end point should be back up at that peak. But since our end point is 4 pi and we don't actually reach there, we only move up to the halfway point. So if we take a look at the halfway point for this section, that is our lower peak. So we should hit our minimum at the halfway point between our entire frequency. And in between our halfway point and zero, we cross over our origin point, in this case being two. So we should hit our origin point at pi, we should hit our minimum at 2 pi, and we just need to make sure to have the appropriate graph where we curve down, where we curve down into our cross, and then curve back up into our minimum. So at this point, it's always good to make references as one whole phase, half a phase, a quarter of a phase, and just have that represented to your frequency, where right now our whole phase for the frequency is 4 pi. So if we extended this to 4 pi, we would see this end up looking like our cosine as original, except stretched out, as well as having different peaks. And also on the left. So at negative pi, we should hit our origin point as well, following along this, uh, the right side, the positive side, but just flipped. And we could see that this would go down as such. And if we continued this pattern, we would have exactly this, just flipped over the y axis going outwards. So now just make sure to keep these in mind as you go through all the sine and cosine sections of the other functions. Hopefully that is helpful for the sine and cosine. It's very, very good uh, to try and mark off every point you can and see where it gets referenced to, to the original functions. They're all representations of the original functions. Tangent again, we're going to be taking a look at, but it is slightly weirder. So try and keep that in mind that it looks like this and not like these. Just as I have been mentioning, since tangent goes off infinitely, it doesn't really matter for our y axis. The only thing, we don't need a maximum, we don't need a minimum. The only thing we do, however, need is an origin point. Normally our origin point is set at zero, but since we are changing it by two, going up by two, our origin point is now at y equals two. So any time that we would start at zero, we should be starting here. And ju just like with sine and cosine, since we're not changing the x value at all, then we have our starting point and ending points. Uh, our starting point for sure is the same. Our ending points may vary based on the frequency. In this case, our frequency is set to 1 half. So we should get this entire pattern going up, down to up, down to origin from 0 to 4 pi. So at our halfway point, which is our 2 pi, we should be hitting our origin point. So we could see that in this case, pi for a 4 pi frequency uh, is representation of 2 pi. These are our halfway points for our frequencies respectively. And so at that halfway point, we should be hitting our origin, which in this case is 2. In between, as our quarter mark, which for 4 pi, a quarter would be just pi, we should be hitting our infinite section, our, um, our infinite section. So no, there should be no value here at pi. And from our starting point, we go all the way to that infinity. So we would curve upwards into an infinite 
upwards set and then from our green section we would be coming down from negative infin infinity up to see I almost I almost uh, set up the wrong origin point that front to our actual origin point for this function remembering that the origin point is set by the y-axis so then over on this side we need to remember that negative pi is a quarter point at those quarter points we have that line of non-existence so we are just going from our origin in a downwards curve into that non-existence and this would be our half frequency stretching it out even more only seeing half of our entire phase now again I do know that looking at these graphs can get confusing just always try and remember this formula here this basic formula that works for every single trigonometric function sine cosine tangent even the ones that we will be looking at in the future and remember what they represent a being our amplitude basically what is our peak what is our minimum B being frequency how much of our phase do we see do we see uh, many phases within it do we see half or a quarter of a phase H and K just pinpointing on the X and Y axis where our starting point is I hope this was helpful uh, I hope you're enjoying your day and stay safe and healthy.